Hello guys, welcome to the Parson series and today we will be continuing with the discussion of lens. So if you remember last time we did saw some of the amazing concepts about the anatomy, physiology and biochemistry of the lens. We did see how actually cataract occurs and today we are starting with the etiopathogenesis and morphology of the different types of cataract. I hope all of you are enjoying with me reading Parsons latest edition 23rd. Now let us see the symptoms of the cataract. Uh, these are entirely visual, usually a blurring of vision though sometimes patients presents late with an obvious white opacity. So most of the time they are coming with some visual complaint, right? In children, an opacity may be noticed by the parents or relatives. In the early stages, the vision is correctable with glasses, but the power would change rapidly. So one of the earliest symptoms. So if you remember what we say, one of the earliest symptoms of the cataract is the frequent change of glasses, right? And which glasses? The distant glasses these are. Then uh, another important thing is your uniocular polyopia is again, uh, uh, early symptom and uh, if you remember we always say that uniocular polyopia is always a feature of early stages of cataract because it occurs due to the uneven opacification. So as we move towards more and more you know mature stages of cataract we are having more of homogeneous opacification and lesser of polyopia. Then uh, doubling or the trebling, yes. Then it is due to the irregular refraction by the different parts of the lens. So several images were forming in cases of uniocular polyopia. Uniocular polyopia, it consists of four words. So uni means one, ocular means eye, poly means many and opia means images. Multiple images which are formed by one eye. Why? Due to the irregular refraction by the different parts of the lens. So different part of the lens is forming different images. It is more noticeable when the pupil is dilated while viewing the very distant objects. It is most commonly reported by patients as seeing multiple moons. Okay. Uh, then very important thing is the colored halos. We all know right from the first day we keep on teaching that what are the DDs of the colored halos if you remember. DD of the colored halos, one is the cataract. Uh, especially important is the DD of colored halos because you know all the DDs, all the causes of the colored halos are really important in, in, in itself also. That is why out of so many DDs, colored halos is one of the important DDs. Then you have got the acute congestive glaucoma and third is your acute mucopurulent conjunctivitis. Acute mucopurulent conjunctivitis. Cataract and glaucoma are important. Nevertheless, you already know this. And uh, out of the conjunctivitis, acute mucopurulent is the most common variety. And that is why all three DDs are really, really important. There may also be a change in the color uh, values owing to the absorption of the shorter wavelength so that the reds are accentuated. Okay. Now see uh, important table the symptoms of the acquired cataract. So first we go with the symptom then with the pathogenesis. This is your symptom. This is the pathogenesis and see the type of cataract. Now again this flowchart will help you solving uh, so many questions directly. Okay. First is your frequent change of glasses. So this will be occurring in cases of cortical or nuclear cataract. Why? Now uh, I always uh, tell you this that the frequent change of glasses is actually related to the change in refractive index. In the nuclear cataract we have increase in the refractive index. This increase in the refractive index uh, is related with the development of progressive index myopia while it is vice versa with the cortical cataract. So frequent change of glasses is due to the rapid shift of the refractive index. Uh, going with the second one, we have got reduced visual acuity. It is gradual, it is painless and it is progressive. Why? Because obviously we have the reduction in the transparency. We have opacification. So this is occurring in all the types. Then the next is your second side. I think you already know this. This is your nuclear cataract. Why? Because we were having the progressive index myopia. There is more and more hardening of the nucleus. So this hardening of the nucleus is compensating 
with the less of the converging power which is occurring with the aging of the lens. So what is happening this is uh, actually leading to the more converging power the rays are converged more from the center because it has been hardened due to the dehydration due to the deposition of the pigments and therefore the rays are focused much anterior to the retina. So when the rays are focused much anterior to the retina what is this this is the development of myopia it is due to the refractive index therefore it is index myopia it is not stationary and that is why it is progressive index myopia. Then uh, the next one next uh, is your um, loss of ability to see objects in the bright sunlight blinded by the light uh, headlamps especially driving at the night. So what is this this is very very important you must have seen patients complaining that they are not able to drive especially the night time driving because there is a loss of contrast sensitivity um, especially at the highest special frequency. So this is uh, very very typical of posterior subcapsular cataract. Uh, now these things will help you in solving the clinical questions when they start uh, with the elderly age when they start with some opacification they are giving you a clue towards the cataract then they will give you something that is signifying that what kind of cataract it could be. Then uh, the next one is your um, monocular diplopia or the polyopia so here, here you have the spoke like opacities uh, with water that forms a radial wedges containing a fluid of refractive index than the surrounding lens. So this uh, they are talking about the spoke like pattern that you get in the cuneiform cataract. What happens in the cuneiform cataract suppose this is the lens and this is the nucleus. So in the cuneiform cataract we have got the spoke like uh, opacities which are coming from the periphery towards the center. Okay, so only in the early cases of the cataract uh, we have this clue that uh, whether the cataract is purely cuneiform or cupuliform because it is the starting point. After it has started and it has crossed the midline, okay, then it becomes difficult to identify whether it was cuneiform or whether it was cupuliform. So in cases of this uh, cuneiform kind of cataract uh, you have got, you know, spoke like pattern that is formed and that can lead to the uh, uniocular diplopia also as well as the polyopia also. Then um, the next important thing is the glare. Glare is usually the initial thing. See the most common symptom that brings the patient towards the OPT is the frequent change of glasses. But uh, if I uh, talk per se in the earliest, the earliest is usually glare because glare is occurring due to the scattering of light. Okay. Now what is the reason why patients are not coming up with glare because it is you know a part of normal um, phenomena also. So nobody will come with a complaint of glare that is why when they come to the OPD they are actually coming with the frequent change of glasses okay. So the glare is due to the scattering of light and scattering of the light is maximum in the cases of posterior subcapsular. Uh, then we talked about the colored halos, uh, colored halos is again due to the uh, irregularity of refractive index especially the water droplets because you have hydration. So there is a scattering of light. So this is again cortical cataract. Then you have a color shift. Now uh, you should be able to differentiate between the colored halos and a color shift. Colored halos means the colored rings which are present around the bright light. So if you are getting the colored uh, lights okay, around that bright light, colored rings you are getting that are colored halos. But uh, the color shift is something different. Uh, color shift actually becomes more obvious after the surgery. So blue end of the spectrum is absorbed more by the cataractus lens. So what happens after the surgery suddenly it will shift because till now the cataractus lens was absorbing more of the blue light. This is more common in the nuclear cataract. And finally you have the visual field loss. So there will be uh, um, generalized reduction in the sensitivity because there is a reduction in the transparency there is a lot of uh, opacification in the lens so that is actually leading to the decreased sensitivity in the periphery also this is, you will find in all types all right so an important one now uh, what uh, what they are saying that as the opacity extends and becomes denser the equity of the central vision suffers but um, the real deterioration of the vision will depend upon the density as well as position density means how much dense it is and position obviously whether it is nuclear, cortical, capsular, subcapsular like that. If the opacities are 
peripheral serious visual impairment will be long delayed obviously because the central area is free enough and the vision is improved if the pupil is contracted with the bright light. So this we read that in the peripheral uh, opacities we have more problem in the dim light. If you remember clumsy vision in dim light and the clumsy vision in the daylight. So we will have clumsy vision in the dim light in cases of peripheral opacities because in the uh, dim light the pupil will dilate and now the rays will be passing through the opaque areas okay if the opacities are central the visual deterioration will be early like uh, it is occurring in the cases of cupuliform we will have early deterioration okay and uh, the patient sees better in the dim light so these people who are having the central opacities they will be having better vision in the dim illumination when the pupil is dilated and this is more problematic in cases of the uh, daylight because pupil will get constricted and uh, whole of the area that is actually visible that is uh, available for the passage of the light is actually opaque uh, posterior cortical opacities often causes central vision now if i talk about the posterior cortical opacities they cause a diminution of central vision apparently out of the proportion to the amount of opacity observed. Now it is always seen that uh, the posterior subcapsular opacities, the po uh, posterior cortical opacities, they tend to affect the vision much more than the anterior one because uh, the nodal uh, you know point is passing through that axis and uh, if I talk about the nuclear sclerosis the increasing uh, refractivity leads to the progressive myopia that we have already talked about if there is a nuclear sclerosis if there is an increased hardening of the nucleus we have the progressive index myopia which leads to the second site it follows with the nuclear senile uh, sclerosis a previously presbyopic patient may be able to read without the aid of the spectacle so people feel as if there is some miracle some magic because obviously a person who is having a cataract if I'm talking about the senile cataract must be 60 years and press biopia is expected after 40 years or 45 years so obviously he must be using the reading glasses now due to the development of this um, nuclear sclerosis we have got seg uh, uh, second sight that means there is a development of myopia what is happening there is an increase in the converging power increase in the converging power will lead to myopia myopia means short-sightedness and short-sightedness means there will be improvement of the near vision so now miraculously this patient starts reading without the aid of the reading glasses and this becomes uh, a magic for the patient and he says that this is a new sight or a second sight so that is called as a second sight so that is again an important thing all right now as the pacification proceeds Obviously, when the opacification will increase, the vision will decrease until only the perception of light. So the final vision, if you see in cases of uh, patients who are having cataract, the mature cataract, you will just get the PL positive. In many cases of advanced senile cataract, fingers can still be counted. Um, like I, if I uh, am having a patient who is having a mature cataract, hypermature cataract, then what I'm expecting, just a hand movement, finger counting, PL positive. I am not expecting some great vision okay in all cases however light should be perceived daily and the direction of in incidence but they are saying that uh, then also you have to take it daily you have to daily uh, see the light perseverance direction of its incidence accurately indicated in other words cataract alone can never lead to inaccurate projection or no light perception i think this is very very important what they are trying to say that um, suppose a patient is admitted with you and there is some delay in the cataract surgery or any other thing then you have to daily one time you have to see the PL and PR that is very very important why because you have to see whether or not some complication is developing because if it is only cataract then it will never and never lead to inaccurate PR so if the patient is showing you inaccurate PR there is something alarming has uh, it has taken place and you should check it urgently you have to resolve it and um, and that is why the daily PL and PR is of utmost importance. In elderly patients with cataract, it is important to rule out uh, other age-related diseases that can impair the vision uh, like glaucoma, macular degeneration and optic atrophy. So side by side, uh, see, uh, a good clinician is the one who is managing the things which are already there and also keeping in mind those things which can develop. So if I am a good uh, ophthalmologist and a patient is admitted with me for the cataract, surgery 
my goal is certainly not just to uh, focus on the cataract surgery. I have to be vigilant about glaucoma that can develop due to the, due to the um, advanced cataract or uh, directly also the ARMD could be there, the optic atrophy could be there. And that is why they say a very good thing that keep on taking the PL and PR daily. So that now every time you may not be available to judge that patient but uh, if you have guided your residents that take the PL and PR and if something untoward happens please remind me so you will not miss anything which is not worth missing. So uh, the moment you found that uh, the PL is affecting or the PR is affecting you have to grossly check this patient okay. Now, uh, first let's start with the most common cataract that is your senile cataract, age related or senile cataract. It is related to the aging affected by lifelong exposure to the sunlight as well as ultraviolet radiations, generally rare in persons younger than 50 years of age. So when I'm saying that it is age related, it is senile, we are expecting it to be occurring uh, in about 50s or 60s and um, unless they are associated with some metabolic disturbances like diabetes and um, almost universal in the patients more than 70 years of age. So um, metabolic diseases let's say about diabetes. So in diabetic people we can have this senile cataract at a younger age group also that is called as a pre-senile cataract but usually I will not expect uh, to have to have this cataract less than 50 years of age because I am saying that this is age related and uh, a good thing is that uh, we usually say that it should be more than 60 years okay and uh, uh, therefore any patient who is coming to me uh, in the age group of 70 years a male or female will always be expected to have some degree of cataract. Now uh, let's talk about the mechanism. Mechanism involves a loss of transparency of the lens. So this is basically occurring due to the changes in the proteins. It is equal in men and women. Usually it is bilateral and usually one eye develops uh, the cataract uh, in uh, one of the eye earlier than the other. Now this is a very, you know, um, inquisitive uh, because, you know, the aging takes place in both the uh, side of the eye equally. And uh, but uh, usually it is seen that one of the eyes affected earlier than the other. I uh, still remember there was a case with me and uh, uh, that Baba uh, was like bent upon saying that why uh, this Motia Bindas happened to my eye and then I uh, smiled and I said uh, Baba age hai. So he said ki meri dono eyes have equal ages then why one of my eye is affected and uh, uh, like you, you, you don't have any answers to this. So this is nature then. So I said ki ye bhagwan ki marzi hai. So at, at some time you know <laughs> the, the patients also uh, throws you in such situations where you don't have the answers and um, uh, this line reminded me of that. That yes it is um, uh, occurring uh, bilaterally but usually one eye is affected earlier and then is the second eye. So they are not symmetrical. There is a considerable genetic influence is also there in hereditary cases. Uh, you know, we can get earlier in the successive generations. This is called as anticipation. The average age at onset of cataract is approximately 10 years earlier in the tropical countries compared to the temperate climate. So, you know, there are a lot of factors. Whenever there is one disease, there are a lot of factors which are actually affecting the racial, the gender. Gender is not here a, a much big factor. Then we have age, we have got climate we have got hereditary something like this. Now coming to the types and stages. So we have got two types of senile cataract. We all know we have got the cortical cataract and then we have got the nuclear cataract. Yes. Now in the cortical cataract the classical signs of hydration are there followed by coagulation of proteins. Yes we all know that uh, the uh, cortical cataract actually occurs due to overhydration, and we know that cortex is made up of proteins. La lenses proteinaceous in nature and what proteins we studied last time these were your crystallines okay so when you have got over hydration these proteins are getting denatured and uh, because they are getting denatured there is opacification now they are no more transparent and therefore that will lead to the changes now on the other hand if I talk about the nuclear cataract this is a sclerotic cataract and uh, here you are having a sclerosis in the nucleus. Sclerosis means we have got the hardening. So basically the cataract is occurring both in the cortex as well as the nucleus but 
there is a whole lot of difference how the cataract is developing. When I talk about the cortical cataract, it is actually the softening which is occurring while uh, in cases of the nucleus, it is the hardening. So one is the soft cataract, one is the hard cataract. In the cortical type of senile cataract, what is the most characteristic change? See, they have um, said clearly that the most characteristic change is the demarcation of the cortical fibers and this is the first thing that is taking place, that is your lamellar separation. Okay, now this can be seen with the help of a slit lamp, it is not visible ophthalmoscopically, um, mostly you know cataract examination takes place on the slit lamp only. The general increase in the refractive index of the cortex gives a greyish appearance to the pupil uh, in contradiction to the blackness in the young. So in the young people we have got transparent lens so there the pupil is actually um, black but as you go towards the cataractus changes, you know this cataractus changes, the whitish lens give you some grayish hue and you, you start seeing a grayish hue in the pupillary area. The grayishness, uh, grayishness is initially not due to the cataractus changes, rather it is due to the increase in the reflection and the scattering of the light. Okay, mind you, this is um, very clearly they have said that initially it is not due to the whitish um, uh, cataractus opacity which is leading to the grayish pupil. Afterwards it is but initially it is more of due to the reflection in the scattering and slowly and gradually it is due to the cataract itself. In the next stage we have got uh, incipient. So let's mark the stages with green. So first was your lamellar separation and then you have got the incipient cataract. So in the incipient cataract we get to know that what is the actual type of the uh, cataract rather uh, rather the stages. So we have got um, one what that is called as the cuneiform type of cataract and another is your cupuliform type of cataract. So if you have missed this at this stage, it becomes very difficult to find out afterwards what was the kind of cortical cataract. The wet shaped opacities are found here. So especially, you know, because cuneiform is more common, so you are getting these wet shaped opacities from the periphery towards uh, the center and they are more common in the inferonasal side. Okay. And they are lying in the cortex, some in front of and some behind. These are preceded by the sectorial alterations in the refractive indices of the lens fibers. And uh, that is why what we are having, we are having irregularities in the refraction. We will have visual deterioration. We will have the polyopia. Now due to these wedge shaped opacities, you know, some, some areas are having that opacifications. If you look at this picture, if you look at this picture, now what we are having, see we are having this area is opaque, this area is opaque opaque, this area is opaque like this. So now you are having a difference of refractive index of this area and this area, this area and this area. So there is obviously lot of irregularities in the refraction and that will lead to more scattering of the light and that will lead to the visual deterioration also. The basis of the wedge shaped opacities. So the bases are peripheral. If you note here, that is the thing. This base is peripheral and these apices, these are towards the center. Okay, so the bases are um, peripheral and the, they are, see, they have seen that they are most common in the lower nasal. In the inferonasal quadrant, it is actually most common. At first, they can only be seen with the pupil dilated. Their uh, pieces will be appearing within the normal pupillary margin. But afterwards, you can see them even with the constricted pupil. With the oblique illumination, the opacities will be appearing gray and... Um, seen with the ophthalmoscope, mirror, retinoscope, slit lamp uh, in the retro illumination. So there are different kind of examinations that you can do in cases of cataract. The first is your ophthalmoscope that will give you a grayish reflex instead of the normal reflex. So we can use that. Then we can use a mirror retinoscope because the refraction is affected. And finally, we can also use the slit lamp in the retro illumination. So these opacities, they will be appearing like black against the red background of the funders okay as they approach the axial area now as the time goes on what will happen the pacification becomes more and more diffuse irregular going to the deeper layers of the cortex okay meanwhile the progressive hydration of the cortical layers is taking place and taking place and that is leading to the swelling of the lens. Do you remember swelling of the lens? Now the lens becomes swollen and uh, what is happening? There will be a change in the morphology of the lens. Now when there is a change in the morphology of the lens, what was happening? Now it is not allowing the aqueous humor to pass through. If you remember how the aqueous humor passes, suppose this is your cornea and uh, this is the iris here 
okay then we have the ciliary body we have the lens and um, what is happening normally the aqueous humor is produced by the ciliary body it is passing through this pupil coming in the anterior chamber and 90 percent is for passing through this trabecular meshwork so this is actually normal this is normal right now what is happening when we have got the swollen lens so lot of hydration so lens has become swollen so there is a change in the morphology so now it is causing the obstruction to the aqueous flow when there is a obstruction in the aqueous outflow so more of the aqueous more of the aqueous means glaucoma and this glaucoma is called as phaco morphic glaucoma this kind of glaucoma is called as the phacomorphic glaucoma because it is occurring due to the changes in morphology of the lens morphic means the structure morphic means the structure and uh, phaco means the lens so this uh, glaucoma is occurring due to the changes in morphology of the lens so see this and this kind of a cataract is called as the intumescent cataract because uh, it has taken the hydration it has taken in the moisture that is the intumescence and this kind of cataract is called as the intumescent cataract so entirely um uh, eventually the entire cortex becomes opaque swelling subsides cataract becomes mature then the next stage will be the mature cataract so next stage is mature in the meantime nucleus suffers a little change except a sclerosis so uh, side by side nucleus is also undergoing nuclear sclerosis as long as there is any clear lens substance between the pupillary margin of the iris and the opacity so if you remember we discussed about the iris shadow so as um, as long as we have got some amount of clear cortex still remaining inside the lens there will be a shadow of the iris over this opaque area that will be iris shadow present so that will be called as the immature cataract and the moment you know there is no clear cortex there will be no shadow seen and this cataract will become mature so we have the lamellar separation incipient cataract then we have got the immature and then we have got the mature cataract okay so when the cortex is completely opaque the pupillary margin is lying now uh, almost in contact with the opacity see the idea is that for the iris shadow to be forming you should have some clear area between the object and the screen what i mean to say suppose this is your um, object and this is your screen okay now if I am showing the light over this, so if I have a space between these, I will have a shadow. Okay, but the moment I do not have any space, now there is a opacification and I do not have any space. Now the object is just lying against this screen, then there will be no shadow, then there will be no shadow. So this uh, occurs in cases of immature and mature cataract. Now let us see how. Suppose this is your iris and uh, this is your pupillary margin, right? This is your pupillary margin and we have got a lens, okay, with the opacification. So, suppose I have some clear area, okay. So, this clear area is there, clear cortex or clear space. So, when I have this clear space, this will lead to shadow, iris shadow present, iris shadow present. But the moment this area is also pacified, then I will have no clear cortex, no space between the pupillary margin and this opacification. So, there will be no shadow formation. Okay. All right. Now, um, yes, we have talked about it. So see this, uh, they have tried to show you the different kinds of uh, cataract, how they appear on the slit lamp examination. Okay, the uh, cuneiform kind of a cataract. One is your, uh, the diffuse illumination. This one is uh, the diffuse one. Okay, let us try to see. This is your diffuse illumination on the slit lamp. Okay, diffuse illumination. This one you can see like in ferronasal quadrant may you can see this opacities can you see I have highlighted them uh, because they are uh, more common in the lower nasal quadrant and this one is your uh, retro illumination retro illumination is there so here you are having these opacities something like this 
So these opacities are again the spoke like opacities of the cortical cataract, right? Then here they are trying to show you the iris shadow. Now see, try to evaluate this. This one is your oblique illumination. We require the oblique illumination for uh, the opacification to depict. Okay, this is oblique illumination. And this is your clear cortex, clear cortex. And uh, this, therefore, this is your immature senile cataract. So, can you see here we have got a iris shadow present. So, we have got a iris shadow present. While if you see here again, I have this oblique illumination, right? But here I have mature senile cataract, there is no clear cortex. So, because I do not have any clear cortex here, so there will be no shadow. So I think beautifully they have shown you the presence and the absence of the shadow in cases of the immature cataract as well as the mature cataract. Okay, now see uh, here they are also showing you the zones of disjunction, <coughs> the different layers that you can see in cases of uh, the immature cataract. Okay, the immature cataract, this one is your immature cataract this one uh, because still you can see some areas where you do not have the opacification multiple layers of opacification are also seen because you know uh, still you have got uh, irregular opacification in cases of immature cataract so this is your immature senile cataract while if you see this one beautiful nuclear pearly cataract this uh, um, this is your uh, sorry, not the nuclear, the total pearly cataract. So this is your pearly white, pearly white cataract. The pearly white cataract we get in cases of mature senile cataract. And that is why, if you remember, I tell you this in classes, ki Motia Bin is called as Motia Bin because actually the mature cataract shows the beautiful pearly white color. So this is your mature senile cataract. All right. Now we head towards the hypermaturity. So if this process is allowed to go uninterruptedly, we are going into the hypermaturity. We are going towards the hypermature cataract. So next stage, green is your hypermaturity sets in. And now the cortex may become um, disintegrated. So we have got two kind of hypermature cataract. One is your morgagnian where there is a lysis and one is your sclerotic type where you have disintegration. Um, okay, the, so in cases of disintegrated, what is happening? The lens becomes more and more uh, shrunken. Shrunken is a very good word here. Uh, yellow in appearance, uh, rather, you know, you can say it is um, chalky white chalky white in color or the milky white in color. So this kind of a cataract is called as a shrunken cataract. So what will happen when the cataract becomes shrunken, the capsule is also wrinkled and um, therefore what is happening, the zonules are also stretched there. So what is uh, happening actually due to the shrinkage, now the zonules are also affected and you know the zonules are holding the lens in position and on the other end they are also attached to the uh, iris. So that is why the lens and the iris becomes tremulous, anterior chamber becomes deep and finally the degeneration of the suspensory ligament may lead to subluxation of the lens. Very, very important. What are the things that are going to take place in the sclerotic type of hypermature cataract? So what is happening actually? Uh, if um, this was your lens and um, this was the capsule before and um, these were the zonules which were holding the lens something like this and uh, they were actually attached to the iris okay they were attached to the iris something like this now due to the disintegration the iris um, remain something like this only but now the lens becomes small the capsule is also shrinkled so what is happening so this lens also will become tremulous so we will have the phacodonesis we will have the phacodonesis and these onules are also stretched here okay so this can lead to the um, tremulousness also it can lead to the subluxation also because 
if these zonules are not working properly, the lens will not stay at its position. You can move here and there. And uh, then on the other hand, this iris where it is attached, this may also get shivering. So we can also have the iridodonesis. We can also have the iridodonesis, phacodonesis, iridodonesis. We can have the subluxation of the lens. All these things can take place, right? So this is sclerotic type of hypermature cataract. And because of this, what is happening? The AC is also becoming deep. So anterior chamber has also become deep, right? Now the other kind of hypermature cataract, uh, as the stage of maturity uh, sets in, the cortex becomes fluid. So here you have got the lysis. Here you are having the lysis of the cortex Due to the lysis of the cortical area, the nucleus will actually sink to the bottom and uh, what is happening, that brownish mass of the nucleus will be settling. So that will be something like this, if this is your um, lens, here the capsule is remaining intact, the brownish uh, mass of the nucleus appears to settle down here and you have got the liquefied cortex here i have shown you with yellowish color because you know that uh, this kind of a cortex uh, cataract is um, yellowish white milky white or chalky white so this is there so what is happening now there will be uh, a cataract that is called as the morgagnian cataract so what is happening here the thing is that these liquefied cortex proteins will start leaking through the uh, capsule they are going they are flowing with the aqueous humor and then they are flowing with the aqueous humor you already know that 90 percent of the drainage of the aqueous humor is taking place through the trabecular meshwork so obviously these cortex proteins these of your um, cortex proteins they are going and they are blocking the trabecular meshwork they will cause the blockade and if there is a blockade in the 90 percent of the drainage of aqueous humor i think you know that there will be glaucoma so this glaucoma will be called as phacolytic glaucoma this glaucoma will be called as the phacolytic kind of a glaucoma lytic means lysis phaco means lens and glaucoma you know so that was a phacomorphic glaucoma and this is your phacolytic glaucoma so can you see this is your uh, shrunken capsule can you see this is your sclerotic type sclerotic type of um, cataract here you can see the shrinkage you can see the shrinkage of the capsule that is there right so this is the sclerotic type of hypermature cataract and look at this, this is your morgagnian. This is the morgagnian type of hypermature cataract. You can see the nucleus settling here. This is the nucleus settling at the bottom. So the proteins are coming out, they are leaking and um, they can cause your phacolytic kind of glaucoma. All right. Now the rate of development of the senile cortical cataract varies greatly, sometimes taking years. Indeed, the cataract may never reach maturity in some individuals. So how much this cataract will go? At how much uh, pace it will grow? In one person, it, will, it may remain immature for years. In another person, it may convert into mature. So that cannot be actually calculated. Very rapid maturation in the young patients indicates some complications. So if it is going very, very rapid maturation in the young age, that means there is some complicating factor it can be cyclitis it can be diabetes cataract with fine radial lines evolve more slowly than those with cloudy opacity so this is a general uh, observation they have seen that those cataracts with ha uh, which have a fine radial lines they evolve more slowly in comparison to the cloudy opacities it is best to examine every case periodically you will have to individualize every case careful drawing or clinical photograph has to be taken and um, it should be always recorded on your file because every time you may not be present to follow that case maybe you are not there so anyone who is actually observing who is examining the patient in your absence also should get all the details and for you also because he or she may not be the only person whom you are examining so you should have that record so that you can uh, um, actually 
uh, realize that what were the stages of the cataract, what were the type of opacities that were present and um, you can actually compare with the present scenario. Another common type of cortical senile cataract is the cupuliform cataract uh, where you have dense aggregation of opacities and I think plaque is a very good word, suitable word for it and it is usually you know in the posterior cortex just beneath the capsule. So cupuliform cataract consists of a plaque usually present in the center of the posterior cortex uh, beneath the capsule and that is why it is also called as a posterior subcapsular cataract. So for all, all practical purposes the cupuliform cataract as well as your um, this posterior subcapsular cataract it is one and the same thing. Uh, then uh, if you see its development so this is actually uh, from the center it is going towards the equator not axially towards the nucleus. Now this is again important like uh, when we talk about the uh, cuneiform type of cataract it is starting from the periphery and going towards the nucleus but when we talk about the cupuliform type of cataract it is starting from the center but not towards the nucleus it is going towards the equator. So if this is your lens okay. Let us draw the posterior area more uh, conical. So, this will be your anterior area, this will be your posterior area and uh, let us say this is the capsule of the lens. Okay, this is the capsule of the lens. So, what they are saying that uh, the opacification the opacification that is developing okay that is developing here towards the center of the posterior cortex so it is not going towards the nucleus nucleus is this this is nucleus this is uh, the cortex and this is your equator okay so this is actually progressing towards the equator and not towards the nucleus so that is the difference it is um, difficult to see with the ophthalmoscope but can be detected as a dark shadow on the distant direct ophthalmoscope it appears in the beam of slit lamp as a yellowish layer and and best seen in the retro illumination against a red fundus reflex. So there are different methods of examining the different kind of cataract and uh, that comes under the different techniques of the slit lamp examination but uh, that is you know uh, more of uh, PG level. So you can remember that this is uh, seen uh, better in the retro illumination. Examination with this instrument is important since being the nodal point. So I told you that uh, this is actually visually most handicapping type of cataract the posterior subcapsular cataract because this is affecting the nodal point and after reading the Snellens chart I think you know the importance of nodal point because you are able to read the letters because of the ang minimum angle of resolution which is formed at the nodal point of the eye and it is affecting that. So opacity will diminish the vision considerably and the lens may appear relatively normal on diffuse examination. So if uh, uh, you are not getting that much of problem on examination but uh, you feel that uh, visual acuity is very very affected then the th first thing that should come to your mind is a cupuliform or posterior subcapsular cataract. In the senile nucleus sclerosis of the lens, now if I talk about the sclerotic type of cataract, we have got two, either uh, it is the hypermature sclerotic type of cataract or it is a nuclear sclerotic cataract. The opposite process is occurring. Here what is happening, we have got the normal tendency of the central nuclear fibers to become sclerosed is intensified. That So here it is more and more hardening of the nucleus which is taking place uh, while the cortical fibers are remaining transparent only here. Okay, this type of uh, cataract tends to occur earlier than the cortical variety soon after 40 years of age. So this kind of a cataract where there is uh, actually age related intensification of nuclear sclerosis this can occur even at 40 years of age. If uh, it typically blurs the distance vision more than the near vision rather there is an improvement of the near vision here as the time progresses so nucleus becomes diffusely cloudy it is gradually uh, spreading towards the cortex and we have got different grades of nuclear sclerosis the colors can be brown red even black. Actually they have started from brown but uh, earlier it was transparent. Okay, so it is going towards the grayish color then it goes to light yellow. Okay, from light yellow it will go to the amber color that is your golden yellow color and then it will go to the brown black and red actually is very rare because we are not letting the cataract go towards red now uh, we are operating it much earlier because there are a lot of complications. Uh, brown is called as the cataracta brunescens okay and um, black is called as the cataracta nigra. This is called as the cataracta nigra and red uh, we do not allow it to reach but if, if, this is called as a rubra if it occurs cataracta rubra.
okay now um, Going to the deposition of the uh, in the lens of yellow pigments, which are derived from the amino acid uh, metabolism. See what is happening due to the aging; the proteins are breaking down. So what we are getting is the amino acid, and these amino acids are getting the metabol undergoing metabolism. They are producing the pigments, and these pigments are depositing, and that is leading to color changes. So they have given you one example. Suppose there is a tryptophan. So tryptophan will lead to the yellowish color. So brown cataract, brunescence, black is nigra. So that. i told you in maturity the sclerosis may extend almost to the capsule so that entire lens will function as a nucleus sometimes what happens uh, slowly and gradually the sclerosis is spreading from the center towards the cortex so sometimes whole of the lens is acting as a nucleus there initially a little change may be seen with the ophthalmoscope except the details of the fundus are hazy occasionally if there is much pigment pupillary reflexes are blackened and uh, there will be lot of visual disturbance at first a progressive myopia owing to the increase in the refractive index leading to the second sight will be found and general impairment but progress is uh, gradually uh, usually very slow hypermaturity generally does not occur in the nuclear cataract as we get in cases of cortical cataract so today in this session we have seen beautifully uh, the different stages of the cataract per se the nuclear cataract the cortical cataract how cortical cataract progresses from the overhydration uh, to the uh what you called as the uh, proteins uh, dematuration we have got coagulation we have got um, clouding we have got uh, diminution of vision uh, it starts from the lamellar separation we have got incipient cataract and in the in uh, cipient cataract we are easily making out whether it is cuneiform variety of cataract or it is a cupuliform variety of cataract then it's going to the immature mature hypermature in the hypermature also we can have what you called as Um, you know sclerotic type of cataract or we can have the more gagnian type of cataract uh, uh, why nuclear sclerosis occurs why we have the progressive index myopia what is the meaning of that what is second sight what are the different grades of the nuclear sclerosis and then we also saw the symptoms like why we are having glare the uniocular polyopia the blurring you can have the dark spots you can have the colored halos and tremulousness is there uh, why we were having the subluxation of the lens so all these uh, things were made clear i hope you enjoyed this session and also reading the parsons along with me see you in the next session of the parsons series with some of the amazing concepts of the cataract associated with different kinds of cataract thank you and happy ophthalmology